call me Fuego. 93 like me. Fire in the sheets, spending summers on the seas. Quedo, no way home. Bell feel life on the day. Fraz doubles down on TSM. Sonic's picked by Clover. Toffee says, Phase, baby, because this is when they rise. Let's all rise up. It is time to start our second game of the day, powered by Intel. Let's head over to the pantheon of perfected pontification, paper thin, and Poby. Much appreciation to our always astute analysts coming through as I am trying to pick up my alliteration game here in game number two. Game one finds ends with a wild city finish win. This plane path on Erangel right down the center, starting over Severny Ever ever so slightly shifting to the southwest a bit over Pachinki. And uh, what do you, okay, Toby, they got their predictions. Um, Clover was right on the first one. She got Entz. She's going Sonics this time. I heard FaZe, TSM. What are you feeling on this one? <sighs> it's, oh, it's so I difficult. It it's so spot. difficult. You look like a legend <laughs> if you get one out of 16, correct? Then you look like a doofus if you if you if you don't get it correct uh you know what i'm gonna go with um tiamba tiamba i like that yeah. i i tiamba yeah. definitely uh someone that i am very high on i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna go out on a limb and i'm gonna say Dom Juan Kia. I'm gonna say this is finally, okay. finally okay. their Surprise. moment to shine. Surprise! I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my Korean Homer <laughs> uh, pick and just double down on Dom Juan Kia. And uh, even though they've not looked great, I mean, in that game, it's really uh, hard to say. Now this circle west, uh, pretty circle. fair west circle. circle. Not, yeah. Yes, yeah. this is very much a Tianba <laughs> circle. And, but this is um. <laughs> Oh, Silzin, if you land one of these, please, 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 please. Do it for the YouTube, do it for the X I think amount it was... of thousands of followers you'll get. They're going to claim the Southwestern Compound. Uh, somehow, some way, Detonation Gaming White has gotten up into these hills you were just talking about, Toby. And they had to cross but basically the entire circle to get here. Now, unfortunately, Kemba sees them, but Kemba whiffs on those first couple shots. That's going to allow Machao to get down the hill. Now some other shots ringing. I mean... For Navi's credit, they do have a great surround on this. They have no idea the tabs here. That's going to be a lot of damage, but still, no knocks yet on the Detonation Gaming White. Yeah, they need to get this over and done with quickly. Fortunately for both the teams, there isn't really anyone around now. Senya does finally find the knock. Malofo falls down. We've seen both Malofo and Macau do tons of damage. They've been all over the, all over the kill, but despite the somewhat passive playstyle from the Detonation Gaming White, they've been really effective. Kemba finds the first, second one falls, and Kemba's there to get the third. Great cold hold from navi they were sitting tight they weren't pushing forward for a good while it allowed for dead nation gaming white to really get into positions but at the end of it they said enough is enough they push down around the side kemba finds the double and they get themselves the wipe but their timing is perfect because they knew that it was navi fighting against them over on the west side earlier and now they're actually taking a fight to um taking a fight to element uh, entry force 36 and they're taking casualties already you can see navi in trouble they they read the third party opportunity perfectly they sent it pretty much across the circle and take fights on the other side now in the meantime sonics they have been met by dam one kia we'll see if they can hold off here no knock so far yeah, Don Juan Kia generally pretty good in up close quarters got fighting, but now they're getting decimated under and Kale, their top two frontline fraggers going down very quickly here. Mime has been knocked as well. Shribzy and Tiggleton are down here, so it's up to H win for the Sonics, taking a whole bunch of damage, but hasn't been finished off just yet. His Molly does find Inigo, so now only Sung Jung. Both of these teams doing critical damage to each other. It all comes down to this 1v1. A good grenade gets some more damage into H win down to 32 health sung jung finding the members of down but h win what in the world through the smoke takes them down and that is oh. going to be dom Juan kia out i was just gonna say and now he has the opportunity to go back and rest his teammates but here comes tsm they're not gonna let that happen and they get both of them so while i thought there was a chance for sonic to get back to being three alive ain't gonna happen h win is on his own we go further into the field and now is when you can start considering trying to go into those fields and play something there there is still a bit of the hillside in but it's gonna be hard to play from for sure 
Over towards the west, face still there. And we had three pull-ups happen at the same time. One of them being the one we see on our screens right here. Division X Gaming got pulled up on by Petrico. And they have completely dominated them. While enough does come in on towards Mamu, it's still a 1v4. And now, let's see Furia trying to play an underneath position. Are you going towards that hillside as well? Where are you going, Furia? Well, they're trying to wrap around the back of the hill. But TSM already dug in. h win does find somebody on the backside in a Na'Vi. Furia is going to pull up on the bottom of this hill. There's no way in hell those grenades are going to anywhere close to where TSM is really, I guess, a little closer than I thought. But still, too difficult to get them up in the hill. And Furia getting torn apart in crossfires between a lot of different teams. There's Zenith getting involved as well. And this is this is just a massacre. K7 rolls up to Zenith, takes a whole bunch of them down. They lose a couple in transition. Tianba, in the meanwhile, dives to the center of the field. They lose Mings, but they're able to get into some kind of playable territory. FaZe gets E36. It's fighting all over the place. Uber just got a 1v4 against Sentry Force 36. I, I, there's every single team from in the north opted to leave at the exact same time, and I don't envy our observers for trying to pick a fight to follow. Opa just 1v4 Entry Force 36. We have to see a replay of that at some point. I hope at least we'll get his POV from that situation because that went down real quickly too. Gustav now trying to hold off against Petrico who opted to push this way around. Once they got the wipe on towards the guys from the North Division X Gaming, they went down here. Now let's see Ixla first one to fall. Aitzi finds him. Aitzi goes down as well though. Yeah, Ixlip just kind of yeeted himself into AT there. Smokes are going to come down. So they go right for the res. Uva, the one-man army, still up on the hill. He's going to see a lot of peril. Gets one. Can he get two? He does. Uva wrecking the rounds for a couple different teams here. Just Mamu left for Pero. This is why you can't let this guy alone. You cannot lose track of him. Fuzzface now peppering some shots into Mamu. Mamu gets behind a tree. There's a little bit of smoke in front of him to cover, but Uba now is going to get the call out from Fuzz, gonna get that ping down on the map, sees him come out, plops a couple SLR shots down, nothing connecting, those looked pretty good through the smoke, just not quite able to find the mark just yet, now Mamu running up the hill, Uba should have it done, and there's Jesus. Uba with seven kills on the round. What a game. Now, we didn't get to see the first one, but these shots here pretty much all connecting. Very great play from Uba. He's immediately going back to shooting again. Finds Lorena as well. He is woken up. Uba has woken up. Is he going to get one more? He knows the position of the other two Tiamba players, but he ain't able to find the angle. We'll miss out on that one too, but Tulan says thank you. And now, speaking of Virtus Pro, finally it's their turn to have to make a move. Tiamba playing with two in the middle. Now the hill is all shifted out, so the field has all of a sudden getting that much more interesting question is how does Virtus pro play it and also for face plan how do they plan on getting into the circle let's see here there is the replay finds the first one goes down to the second pops him instantly finds the third on the other side instant spray down on him and then reload find the fourth over the hilltop i saw it unfolding in the midst of all the chaos and the kill feed and there you go that is a four piece for uber what a slaughter just absolutely incredible. I mean, the guy sprays at that distance, just so accurate, so good, so well controlled. And that's really difficult for any team to deal with. I don't care who you are. And E36 are going to be the ones who suffer this go around. Now, Wookie has K7 lined up. There's a few vehicles, a few of the old Zenith vehicles, plus some that K7 brought to the party as well. And Wookie is going to be watching this. There is a phase that still has to come down off this hill as well. Wookie trying to buy some time and space for his teammates to get down the hill themselves. There's a good grenade, or excuse me, an explosion from Lin Shun. And that is going to be two down very quickly for K7. Just locks lock left. That U is pretty well beat up so if you blow that one up that might be it for k7 fuzz face does get down the hill finds that hay shack but here come the grenades to get rid of it and fuzz face very quickly knocked by good grenades from tiamba this is another factor that we haven't talked too much about in the later weeks, but the fact that we can now blow up hay bales means that those smaller hay bales the round ones that you see mings and lin shun sit around they become the prime positions because they aren't destructible the same way that the bigger hay bales are. So while the bigger hay bales might grant you some more cover, they can also be removed like we just saw with first phase. And he's now stuck in the open. Gustav goes down, gets flushed as well. Upa is on his own. He's done a great work so far, but I don't see this run be possible. And nope, not going to happen here. Rusen finds him seven kills. Great performance from Upa, but face falls short. 
There's a fascinating 4v4 brewing on the south side of the circle. TSM versus Buri Ram United. Ooh, Lin Shu gets outdueled by Zenon with the SLR there, so that's going to put him on the knees. Mings could be looking for the res. Some grenades trying to reach out and finish what they started, but they are going to be coming up a bit short to get to the knock. Zenon now is going to use the opportunity to heal. There was a knock from Kanaxi, and quickly a couple what? down for TSM over on the side. Wookie is dead. It's just Iro solo for Team Solo mid, and he is trying to hold on. They're going to pop the tires out underneath him, thinking about seeing if he can hold them off and maybe somehow, some way, get to that res. Not going to happen. Miraku's dead. Gladra just spraying into this vehicle. They're going to blow that U.S. up. Really smart here by Buriram, recognizing that this could be their opportunity to finish the member of Team Solo mid off. And there are going to be some stuns popping up and in. He's prone. Not a whole lot left for Iro to do yet, unless somebody else gets involved in this fight. We talked about Burram, and I mentioned them not having biggest faith in them previously. Here they show it again, straight up 4v4 between the two teams, and they're just slaughtering TSM within seconds. Iro, all that's left of the team now, and he can't do nothing but prone. Issue for him is he's not inside the next circle, so Burram, they can now go back, step it back one sec, go, okay, let's focus in. We'll just have one guy play isolation on Iro. We know he has to make the run for it. He doesn't have a vehicle functioning. ED, go in, get a spot in the circle. Issue being now that Necro is right next to him. You might want to throw a preemptive nade, even if you don't see a guy over there there is a vehicle that's almost blown up and you have to expect there to be a player there too and while all this has happened on the south side Virtus Pro has tried to position them better up towards the north and this could be a very 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 interesting straight up 4 before between Spur Ram and Virtus Pro Noatra finds TSM out they go Iro eliminated one snake in between these two powerhouse teams yeah, so that fight with Buriram and TSM beats Buriram up a little bit. Some utility being used. Virtus Pro uh, looking pretty decent with some level 3 gear. A few throwables in the pocket. But Tulens has a good opportunity. Only able to connect one shot there. But Spyro did find Godmeow. So Hyruzin looking up and over this slight angle on top of this hill that he has. Edie's going to get the return knock onto Spyro. He is on the ground. So it's a 1-1 knock trade so far. Meanwhile... There is just Necro chilling for Furia, just hoping that these two teams do enough damage that he's going to be able to spring to life at the end, potentially take a win for himself. There is still Kanaxi with that bolt. Keep my eyes on that, see if he's maybe able, able to get a good knock on Virtus Pro and open the door here for Buriram. Both these teams have had second place finishes in this set of weekly finals. Oh, I thought that vehicle might hit Edie, but not going to happen. Necro is still alive as well. And well, Frost said on cast, don't throw this. For him. I don't think in this particular game there's a lot to throw. We're all, of course, thinking back to the game against Day Trade yesterday, where I think both of you and me, Paper, and for a good portion of the viewers and the desk, they thought Burram had it on a lockdown, and yet. Yet, Norwich managed to bring it to a win for the guys from Day Trade. We'll see now if Burram has what it takes to finish it off. And as I say that, got me out full. So, 4v3 with a snake in the middle. Who is going to win it? Burram have to move over the hillside. Oh, it's looking good for Virtus Pro, but let's see what's going to happen here. Noatra falls early. Yeah, this is starting to fall apart for Buriram. They did so well, but the angle's just a little bit better. This hill for Virtus Pro, really useful to try to line up a bunch of shots. They have a little bit of cover because of the hill line as well that they can shoot over. So the it's going to be the AWM for Lou. Spyro is res, and he is trying to push a little bit forward. And Necro is going to just chill. He wants no part of this. As he waits, and he's looking very much towards Virtus Pro's direction. I guess the good thing for both teams is that they were 4v4 just before, and they saw 9 alive, which means there has to be... Like, had it been 3 and a solo, maybe the other team would have thought, wait, okay, there's just 4v4, and they would have ignored the snake. But now everyone knows, guys, somewhere within this still pretty big field there... Oh, there, oh. never mind. There's a snake. And he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> How does this always happen to me? I try to build up a storyline, and the guy's you dying are... in sentence. Hey, you are just hey. you are just the uh, the snake charmer, man. You are just catching them out and squeezing the life out of them, my friend. So now, same. Invertus Always Pro, yes, really has a great lockdown in this. Now, that being said, if you can get Lou out of here with that AWM, you're going to open up quite a bit of space. You have a Mark 14, one of the most destructive guns in the games. Edie does a nice push forward. Some cover fire from his team helps a bit, and it's Virtus Pro trying to take advantage of it. But for now, Virtus Pro has a line set up around that northwestern yeah. edge, and they are not moving. 
this is where Brood is pro. I mean, we can talk as much about how we want, as, as much as you want about how Brood Ram is a great team. We haven't really dialed in on Brood is pro in these situations. The way that Batulin splits out the players in this is so damn terrifying. Now 4v2, they're like, the way they're just swarming them right now, they're spreading out, they have control of both sides of the circle, and they're slowly gonna start pushing forward. They're slowly gonna, slowly gonna start pushing in towards the dot in this one. Very, very, very thought through play style they're bringing into this. No chances, no crazy plays now while all this happens they do manage to get the res up onto one so not over committing on this one but they're using the time to push for the forward Kanaxi fold Spiro nice off angle position do they spot one on the side they do not Ooh. one folds two folds Luandra and Edie they're not giving up yet yeah, these guys are nuts. They do not fall easily. They're all over the place to react to things quick. They're going for the res onto Kanaxi. Spiral over to Batulins. Lou looking around by Hyruzen. Edie seeing if he could catch anything else. It was a good effort here by Virtus Pro to take advantage of the fact that they had a couple frags left. Edie's going to get in the car and drive. See if he can avoid anything. There is smoke for some cover over here. So utilizing that smoke against Virtus Pro. Going to come up along the side. Mollies are next to him. He avoids it. Grenade out front bounces off the hood isn't going to catch any damage trying to see if he can get somebody along that edge doesn't find it here comes some stuns and some mollies of his own Edie has to get on the ground now it's Noadra holding the center of the circle it, it, this is interesting Buriram with all of this work that Virtus Pro did to line themselves up around the edges to try to contain Buriram Buriram has brute forced their way with those two knocks towards the star in the center of this and now it's a prone game this one could actually take a full another minute and I say that Edie lines up one gets the knock on the Batu I don't think there's any reason to try to flush that. Just look and see if anybody's trying to take advantage of you on the side. Lou still has that AWM, and now he's pretty keen on going to the assault rifle. And look at this. VP bunched up behind these smokes. Now Buriram has kind of pushed their way forward. Shepard and VP in, but they're going to get the knock onto Kanaxi. Now it's just two left for Buriram. Hyrus is going to see <gasps> Noadra in the grass. Edie, the only one left. Can he do it? The 1v3. Is it going to be possible? He sprays down. No, it is going to be Virtus Pro finally coming through with the win here in the week two weekly survival. There is so much for any viewer and any lover of PUBG Esports to take away from the final three minutes of this game. They were playing a complete mirror image. I loved what Virtus Pro tried to do when they got the first knock. Don't over -aggress. You know what? Let them pick it up. We'll use that time to get ourselves into a better position.